just alive, but vibrant for the city of Baltimore. I just think he's done a great job. And if you haven't been here or need to come back, come back and tell him what a great job he's done. I think we ought to do that because he has made our senior center and made our seniors' lives incredibly vibrant because he recognizes that we got to do something with our seniors. Most of you know I have a mother here today, um, and I told her, I said, Mom, you should come here to the senior center. She said, yeah, we should do that. And so I want to tell you, Mom, please, don't do that. So um, I have to be the 41st district team that's here today. We've represented this community at least a decade. And so let me tell you who's here with us here today. We start with Delegate Jill Carter. We then have um, Delegate Nathaniel Oaks. And we have Delegate Sandy Grossberg. All, all four of us. And so each of them will, will talk about their successes and the high points of their sessions. But what's so important to me is that we recognize that we have an election coming up in, um, in, um, in, in June of this year. Uh, yeah. Look, the thing is telling me too, June 24th, we have an election. And I ask you to do this. Well, I know how important it is that people say their piece and that they make sure that their vote is counted. Maybe the last, but um, <laughs> they, they pushed me up here first. Um, Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's hard for me to believe that I've been now this is my third term, and I, I come before you today um, after 12 years of an experience that I could have never ever envisioned um, 12 years ago when I first said, "Please, please uh, let, elect me so that I can go to Annapolis." Um, I'm a lawyer, and now I want to make laws and help make laws. It's been um, it's been an interesting and very at times very difficult experience. But we are only as strong as, as you are, and you and you made us and you lift us up to be. So I thank you, the NAACP, for that. I especially thank um, the current president, President Hill Aston. She supported so many of pieces of my legislation. I can always depend on her to come to Annapolis on important issues when I need them. Briefly, and I'm not going to be very long, but I'm not, because I don't want my colleagues to talk. We had we had a really good session, I think. Um, from the decriminalization of marijuana, which I'm going to have to always, and we'll talk about it more, lift up Delegate Oaks, who when I first got to Annapolis, sponsored legislation to do that, but we weren't ready yet for it. So now the legislature is finally caught up with it. And um, just to be clear, because I know there's people in here, like my mother, who aren't a fan, we're not condoning the use of marijuana, we're just saying that um, for small amounts of it, people should not be criminalized in a way that will destroy their opportunities to further education, obtain housing and employment. And um, that's where we are with that. It's still not a legal substance and we still have some more to do to, fix, to kind of fix disparities. And for the record, I'm the first to say that <clears throat> I'm glad that ACLU put out a booklet and decided that we had to address this problem now because there's racial disparities when it comes to arrest for marijuana. But let's be clear, there's racial disparities and arrest for everything due to hyper-releasing over prosecution and over-conviction and failure to address the real issues in our communities, um, and that's something that we want to do. And um, I have to take note, it's, it's a rare opportunity that we are any kind of a community meeting we see our good friends from the uh, mainstream media, the Washington Post and the Baltimore Sun, and I would be remiss if I didn't say that I'm so pleased that we are, in certain respects, a very tight-knit community. And I've been able, with the help and support of the NAACP and other constituents and the Legislative Black Caucus, um, the Chairwoman Aisha Brayboy, who we heard from earlier, to get some substantial legislation accomplished. This year we passed a bill called Christopher's Law. And it's particularly important to me because it's named after a uh, black teenager in Baltimore County. But in Baltimore City, we've had a lot of issues with lack of trust and lack of a good relationship between police and community, and we've needed for a long time to fix those problems. And so Christopher was, Christopher Brown was a young man, a 17-year-old teenager, who happened to be strangled to death by an off police officer. And so what Christopher's law does is it mandates enhanced training for police officers when it comes to diversity, life-saving skills, including CPR. And um, that's very, very important. 
because police forces are getting younger and younger, the training is less and less, and the same biases that people hold in life, they carry with them in whatever endeavor that they engage in. And so, based on the fact that every 28 hours, every 28 hours in America, a black man, woman, or child is killed at the hands of law enforcement or someone acting under the auspices of law enforcement, such as security guards or off-duty policing. Um, this is a very important issue from the notoriety that Trayvon Martin got to right here in Baltimore City with, um, there's been a lot of um, outcry for people that have been um, lost their lives while in police custody, such as Anthony Anderson, Tyrone West, and others in the recent last couple of years, and also over in Frederick County, um, the man with disabilities, Robert Ethan Saylor. Delegate Oaks is going, <laughs> always the leadership to embrace and address our issues. We have to force, we still unfortunately, even though we're very, very loyal constituency, um, we still have to force our issues to be heard a lot of times. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm hoping to continue to have your support, and not just election time, but, but working together on legislation that really lifts up our quality of life in our community. Thank you. I'm Sandy Rosenberg, and I'm very proud to be part of the 41st District team. We are here to ask for your vote on June 24th, and even starting earlier, on June 12th, uh, when early voting begins. Uh, we have worked together for this community, for the Howard Park community, for every community in our district over the last 12 years that we've served together. Uh, there's going to be a grocery store uh, just a block away because of hard work on our part, <laughs> Councilwoman Inspector's part, and especially there's a gentleman in the back, Preston Green, uh, on his, his effort as the head of the Howard Park Improvement Association. And it doesn't stop there. Because of the money that's coming uh, to Baltimore City that you've heard about, the $1.1 billion uh, for um, public school renovation, Calvin Rodwell, is in the second year of that effort, and they've begun their planning, and in response to some of the work and some of the issues that we raised, uh, the mayor has committed five, no, $25 million for uh, money to be spent in the neighborhoods surrounding the schools uh, that are being renovated, so we have a great opportunity here uh, with the Ambassador Theater and that whole block to make a difference when we have a new shopping center, new school, and a totally renovated business community. Uh, one policy issue I want to discuss is the death penalty. I had the honor of working with Lisa. We were the lead sponsors of the bill. It was the governor's bill, but we had put it in before then, so we were listed first. I had the honor of sitting next to the lieutenant governor uh, at the hearing, and when someone mentioned that America was one of, I think it's seven countries, where the overwhelming majority of executions, state executions, take place in the world. I turned to Ben Jealous and I said, South Africa used to be on that list <laughs> until the end of apartheid and the election of uh, the, the new regime, the new uh, uh, presidency. And Thank you very much for coming out tonight. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to at least give you an idea of some of the things that we were able to accomplish, not only this year, but in our tenure. They talk about this building. This building is a product of Lisa Gladden as well as Jill Carter on separate occasions. We put the bond bills in. We got the bond bills passed. So this is part. I guess I was standing between you and the <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, he was laying out the <laughs> Seriousness. The one piece of legislation that I thought uh, need to be brought to the community, and especially since the chair lady of the Legislative Black Caucus is present, uh, under her tenure over the last two years, we did a lot of good things. But the decriminalization of the marijuana uh, was one of our big tasks, and we got that at the last moment. And because of her support and because of her open mindedness, she led herself to a couple of members, myself and Keith Mitchell, to revisit that issue 
came to the committee, came to the House as a bill, was ready to leave out the House as a task force, and we was tired of studying what we think we already knew. So uh, with the leadership of the caucus chair, uh, and I want to publicly thank her for allowing us to get behind that legislation. Even, even the news media said that had it not been for the Black Caucus and the leadership of, of Delegate Brayboy, that bill would not have been able to get passed. The reason why I jumped behind that bill, that bill was very simple. It leveled the plan, Phil. We to the government talk earlier. Blacks and white smoke pot at the same rate. That's already proven. Eighty-three percent of the blacks that come in contact uh, go to jail or get a criminal record. Seventeen percent of the whites is the only is they get that record. That was one fact. The other thing is it takes away by decriminalizing, it takes away your ability not to be able to get any law. Uh, since it's civil, that does not affect your criminal record, so therefore you still can go to school, you still can get a job, you still can get out. I think that I'm uh, stretching this over, so uh, <laughs> Andrew's looking at me. And uh, since this is the beginning of the season and we are expecting you all to come out again, the election is going to be June the 24th. We are asking for your support. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to yield back the mic to Andrew. Uh, I knew I should have